Welcome to DeFi, the podcast making the most important projects in DeFi easy to understand and accessible to all. This week, we talked to Pablo from Angle Protocol, who described themselves as the first decentralized, capital efficient, and over collateralized stablecoin protocol. You know, Pablo, would you like to, to give yourself a, an intro? Uh, sure, no problem. Thanks, uh, thanks for inviting me, Johnny. Well, my name is Pablo, based in France. I'm kind of I'm a new person in DeFi. Uh, Angle Protocol is my, my first project. Before that, I was a student at Stanford University. And even before Stanford, I was in Polytechnique in France doing some math, uh, engineering stuff. I really got into crypto at Stanford, playing around with DeFi. M- my first uh, touch with, crypt- with DeFi was Compound. Uh, I know it's a protocol many people uh, uh, don't use anymore, but I was just getting yelled on USDC uh, by, by, by lending like USDC. Uh, and then I, I realized when doing this that I was subject to huge change risk because I'm based in Europe. Uh, my home currency is the euro. And in 2020, uh, USD lost 10% uh, of its uh, power with respect to, to the euro. So unless you had made a 10% yield on your stable coins, you lost money like, like I did uh, using Compound. And so I thought a year ago, well, we need to create a well-integrated Euro stablecoin. And that's how uh, we started the Angle Protocol. I came to see uh, two other uh, Stanford friends, Picodes uh, is uh, anonymous and Guillaume. And we started to think about the idea of making a Euro stablecoin. We didn't know what was ahead, ahead of us. We just had the will to make a tool uh, for an inclusive DeFi, a tool uh, that could allow people wherever they are in the world to accept to access stable coins that are decentralized and hence transparent and stable coins denominated in a currency for which they don't have to face a change risk. We are starting with the euro, but we have built a protocol that could, that generalizes super well. Uh, we could do a CHF stable coin, a GBP stable coin, a st- stable coin spec to anything with the uh, Angle protocol. One, one thing, so we wanted to do a euro stable coin. The question we had was then, how do we do a Euro stablecoin? And maybe I, I, I could do a, a bit later in the details of how we ended up building the protocol, but we, we, we iterated a lot. Uh, we didn't come up with the idea of what the Angle protocol is in, in like, in like a day. Uh, making a stablecoin protocol, it's, com- it's complex. Uh, it's complex because it implies taking something that is super volatile as a collateral because decentralized stablecoin protocols are backed by crypto collateral and making something stable on top of it, uh, out of it. And so we, we went over all the decentralized stablecoin protocols we knew, Maker uh, Maker being the first one. We could have just copied Maker, changed the Oracle, but we realized that there were some flaws uh, with the Maker design. Uh, the first flaw um, we see is that it's not capital efficient to issue DAI. Like to, to get one of DAI, uh, you need at least, depending on the collateral type you're using, 1.5 of collateral. And what makes DAI stable, it's the fact that there's a lot of USDC behind it, uh, used for arbitrage. And so besides making stable coins that are not only USD stable coins, we thought that there was a way to improve how decentralized stable coin protocol works. So Angle Protocol stands for these two things. And that's what we do. That's what uh, I do with our core team, with our community, try to develop stable coins not pegged to the USD and try to develop um, to revolutionize the way uh, decentralized stable coins are made. Amazing. Just backing up a little bit, what were you, you know, what were you studying at, at Stanford and how did that lead you into, into Angle? So first, before going to Stanford, I only did my master's degree there. I did a lot of economy, like economics classes. Uh, and I, I went through all the French engineering curriculum, did math, did physics. You know, the French system is great. Uh, it gives you like really wide knowledge on a lot of aspects, uh, but you're not super specialized. Uh, and there was no area in which I was really specialized. I decided to go to Stanford because I was like, okay, now I need to, to learn how to do real stuff. I was good at math, good in physics, good in chemistry, good in biology. But there was no subject in which I could make a difference. I started playing around with data science, did a lot of uh, game theory too uh, at Stanford because like you, you control all the data in the world that you can make the most powerful algorithms and what you do. At least, well, it's not super interesting. Uh, you, you're not changing the world by doing this. You're just over-optimizing algorithms. It's interesting on a technical standpoint, but I wanted something that could be interesting both from a technical standpoint and from the impact you have in the world. And crypto, I, I fell in love with it as soon as I discovered uh, how it works. Was when was that? In, in 
2019, I had a class in Polytechnic. I had a crypto class, understood how blockchain works quite in details, um, the, the economic aspects of it. Been an investor since then. So really, I entered in the game quite late. And then at Stanford, I had another crypto class. You know, there, there are all the A16C guys, the Paradigm guys that go give lectures in that class. We had Dan Robinson, Georgios Konstopoulos from Paradigm who gave a lecture, Ali Yaya and Eddie Lazarin who gave a lecture from Understander of It. I don't remember who did what, which lecture, but they gave us class, this class. And, and then right after taking this class at Stanford, I was like, okay, there's no other way. There's no way I'm, I'm doing data science uh, for a, a tech startup in San Francisco. I want to work in there. So I, I tried to apply uh, in many crypto companies, but uh, I got rejected uh, by some of them because uh, I didn't have any huge uh, Solidity project. I was not mm. an active community member. And I understand uh, I, I had nothing. Uh, Who did you apply to out of interest? Uh, I don't think I can I can remember. I, I applied to French French startups, uh, so mm-hmm. Sower, uh, the one who raised like a lot of funds, the NFT. Sorry. Uh, so, sorry. Yeah. I applied to them, didn't get a reply. And from Multis, uh, an accounting an accounting startup didn't get a reply mm-hmm. either. And then there were protocols, but that are not famous any longer. Uh, I just you know went to crypto crypto jobs uh, and applied to the ones I was seeing as a solid ETF. Right. Unfortunately, I, I, I knew like I didn't want to be a, an employee. I prefer to do my own things. Sure. Uh, and starting thinking about the Angle protocol, really like um, as, a, as a class project, as a school project, we were still at Stanford uh, from January to March, uh, taking some classes, uh, having some classes. But with, with my Stanford friends, we're thinking uh, every week about, OK, how do we make a stable coin? How do we make uh, sustainable? How do we improve of our maker, of our frax, of our faith? Even though these are great protocols, but how do we make the infrastructure that could generalize to, to, to any kind of asset and that is robust enough? to resist bank rents, to resist adverse market conditions. What was it about, you know, there's many different components to, to DeFi and to crypto. And like, what was it about stable coins that like captured your attention, like stable coins in particular? Just uh, I had no knowledge uh, really of DeFi. Now, now uh, I think I understand DeFi quite well all the components, all the composability in it. And stable coins, I had been exposed to it when I was at Stanford. I saw that there was a, a clear market opportunity with the lack of euro stable coins. And it was more uh, like a pragmatic uh, pragmatic point of view. Uh, and now, now that I've been, uh, spent a lot of time on stable coins, I really love this, this as, a, as a subject because it's complex uh, to make a stable coin protocol. And I'm interested in research uh, in this area. We are doing a lot of research at Angle 2 on, on stable coins. But in the first place, it was more pragmatic. OK, there is a market opportunity there. Let's do it. But if, if we had to do something else, like if AMMs hadn't existed at this, at this point, maybe we would have ended up doing something like that because we could have seen the, the market opportunity, even though I, I doubt that. But uh... An interesting question I suppose I have is, you know, DeFi is kind of denominated in USD. What implications can you see for like just trying to, I'm just trying to fully understand the problem that you at the very peak are trying to solve. What do you think the implications are for the EU uh, of having a euro stable coin that's really, you know, reliable and decentralized? So first thing, like the, the, the reason why I started this is the change risk. You are in the EU, you are using USD, USD lost, uh, loses 10%, you just lose money. But this is from a personal standpoint of someone living in the EU. If you think of the countries as a whole, having USD stable coins, people are like, oh, uh, stable, like states are, are m- maybe not like, but from what they think, uh, they're like, oh, stable coins, uh, USD uh, stable coins. It's a loss of power for the U.S. government because we're not controlling the issuance of money. But this is not true. Uh, USD stable coins uh, are, are great for the, the U.S. government because they are pegged to the USD. So right. they, they, they mimic the inflationary policy of the dollar. And having more USD stable coins with respect to euro stable coins, it means that the dollar is getting right weight with respect to the euro. Mm-hmm. So people in Europe, it's, it's like people in Europe using USD. And when you are European governments, you absolutely want to avoid that. You want people to use your currencies to respect the monetary and economic choices you are making. So f- from a global perspective, having euro decentralized uh, euro stable coin, even if they don't control the insurance of it, we're doing something that's fully decentralized. So no one, no one is really controlling the way stable coins are issued. It's like the smart contracts are here. You can just interact with it. But for the, the French state and the European governments, I think they should fight to have more euro stable coins. And the reason why we haven't seen many euro stable coins so far, there are three main reasons, uh, at, at least too big. The first one is that there are negative interest rates in the eurozone. You can hardly build a viable business model. Like you, you can hardly make a tether equivalent in euro. Because you have a hundred, let's say you have a hundred euro in the bank in the beginning of the year, hundred stable coins. 
then at the end of the year, you may have, you may still have your 100 stable coins, but only 99.9 euro in the bank. Right. Uh, and you're not paying yourself and you are just losing money. So unless you invest in the money markets and take substantial risk using your reserves, your euro reserves, you, you're, you're losing money and, and it's risky. So first reason. So like, I mean, it'd be, yeah, it'd be, it'd be great to hear about how you guys are trying to, to solve some of these issues. Okay, uh, so now we are getting into uh, into the technical part, into how how the Engel protocol works. What, what we wanted to do uh, with Engel, uh, we wanted to build a stablecoin that is capital efficient. Like to get one of stablecoin, you need one of collateral. With one of stablecoin, you can always redeem one of collateral, and that's what makes the stablecoin stable. If if you don't have uh, if you don't have that, you don't have direct arbitrage opportunities whenever the price deviates from peg, and you can hardly put the price back to peg. Now with Engel, now it's life. Whenever the price deviates because someone places a huge buy order on euro stable coins or sells a lot of stable coins, you have someone on the other side that's incentivized to 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 make a trade and and put the price back to peg and that makes a profit by doing it. Mm-hmm. Now, how do you make a system work like that? And that's really how we thought and how we designed it. So let's take the example of you have one ETH, you come to see the protocol, we look at the oracle value for the for this ETH around four thousand euros, we give you four thousand euro stable coins. Now the protocol has one ETH and it has issued 4,000 euro stable coins. Let's say the price of ETH is divided, uh, decreases by 50%. You have your 4,000 euro stable coins. You want to redeem ETH. Now uh, for 4,000 euro stable coins, you should be able to get two ETH because the price decreased by 50%. But the protocol only has one ETH. And all the, the question we are trying to solve is how are we finding this other ETH on the market mm-hmm. if the price decreases? And that's what all stable coin protocols try to do. Maker... The, it, it reflects to, it's the question of absorbing the volatility risk. Decentralized stablecoin protocols, they have volatile collateral, they want to make something stable, and they all try to absorb the volatility of their collateral. Maker does that by fragmenting liquidity in, uh, in votes. You have other models uh, like empty set dollar, basis cash, none of them worked really well, which relied on the signature rate share model, where they use the secondary volatility token, most often a governance token, to like the, to be able to control the, the supply, uh, to adjust the supply when price go down. And, right, so uh, similar to what Frax does. Exactly, similar to right. what Frax does. Phase is a bit different, um, even though there are, there are some similarities. You have other also uh, models like Ample Force. It's rebasing mechanisms. If the value of your collateral decreases, the amount of stable coins you have, you have in, in your wallet also automatically decreases. Mm-hmm. It's not the best system, but it's a system that works too. What we're doing at Engel, we, we, we conceive ourselves as a marketplace between people who want to get volatility and people who want to get uh, stability. You give us one ETH, you get 4,000 euro stable coins. Now the protocol has one ETH in reserves. It needs to hedge itself against this, uh, the volatility of this ETH. And so what we're doing is that we're selling the volatility of this ETH to other people, to long mm-hmm. traders who are getting perpetual futures. And what the protocol does is that if the price of ETH decreases, like long traders to, to open a position, they just need to bring some collateral and say, look, some ETH and say, look, you have this one ETH in reserve. I'm going to commit to the volatility of this ETH. Now, if the price of ETH increases, well, this person has the right to the capital gain she would have made if she had owned the ETH. But if the price of ETH decreases, we are going to take a portion of the collateral she initially brought to cover mm-hmm. for the loss of the uh, ETH she was covering. The protocol is long volatility. The protocol is long volatility, but when people come and take this volatility, the protocol gets neutral and it distributes this, this volatility to people who themselves are long volatility. Mm. You give us one ETH, you get stable coins. The protocol is long volatility, but we have other people coming in the protocol and saying, look, I want to, to, to long, to get this volatility and these people get long volatility and this makes the protocol neutral. The thing okay. is, this can this can only work uh, if you always have enough people taking the the amount of volatility you have to offer. Mm-hmm. You may give you may give me one ETH and I give you four thousand euro stable coins, but if there is no one taking the volatility of this ETH, the protocol is, is still long volatility. And what the protocol right. does, we, we're not the only one to, to rely on this. It's like derivatives back protocol. The uh, UXD, uh, the UXD protocol on Solana does that. The, there are other like Lien, Pika Finance, other protocols try to do it. Why we innovate? is uh, in the fact that all, all protocols know that we need to maintain this balance between long and long and long and stable all protocols have a, what we call an insurance fund to be able to cover the ca- for the cases where uh, demand is not sufficiently matched is not sufficiently balanced where there are not enough longs 
And what we do in the case of Engel Protocol is that the insurance fund is made up of funds from another type of agent that participates in the protocol. Uh, it's people who just lend collateral to the protocol. Now, now I'm going to shift back to, to the real situation of the protocol, the, the real current situation of the protocol, where we have a euro stable coin backed by USDC and DAI. And so people opening long positions uh, and getting the volatility of the collateral are just getting long USD versus euro. Uh, so if the price of USD increases with respect to the euro, they get uh, they get some some collateral. That's that's a, that's a cool thing for 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 us. Uh, but now now we need an insurance fund in this case. The insurance fund comes from people who lend USDC to the protocol. This is what makes up the insurance fund. And how do we incentivize them to come? Uh, let's say the protocol owns 150 USDC. In re- it has 150 USDC in reserves. 50 coming from people who wanted stable coins who gave us 50 USDC and we gave them euro stable coins. 50 coming being the margin that what we call the margin of long traders who brought us 50 USDC and told us, look, we are hedging uh, the volatility of these 50 USDC from uh, users who wanted stable coin. And then the last 50 USDC from the insurance fund, from people who put money in the insurance fund. 150 USDC, we can lend this, this 150 USDC to other protocols. Angle is a stable coin protocol, but it has forked YERN. So we have strategies to make use of our collateral. We get yield on 150 USDC, but this yield, we just distribute it to people who brought 50 in the protocol, meaning they get 3x more yield than what they would get if they had uh, implemented the same strategy themselves. Hmm, interesting. So we can propose them a leveraged uh, yield, a higher yield than what they would get if they were directly going to compound sure. Ave or y- using the same strategy on your, uh, you did for USDC for, uh, but for Ether, it's the same. Our insurance fund, you give us Ether, uh, we'll have a Lido strategy, uh, and you receive the Lido yield with, uh, with, uh, with additional rewards, uh, a bigger yield than, than the Lido yield. And so that's how the protocol works. So to sum it up. What, what does the Angle protocol consist in? It's a stable coin protocol for which if you want to get stable coins, super capital efficient, you, it's just a swap. You bring collateral, you get stable coins, a swap at Oracle value, more efficient than DAI and then most protocols. There are small transaction fees to cover for front running risks and other technical risks, mm-hmm. but that's what the protocol does. Second element, we offer leverage. If you want to get leveraged because uh, you, you are bullish on, on Ether, on the long term, Angle is the solution because we offer leverage in just one transaction. You don't have to deposit uh, Ether on Aave, borrow USDC, swap USDC for Ether, and then get a 1.5 leverage. In the case of Angle, just one transaction, you get uh, the leverage of your choice, and you don't have to pay funding rate or interest rates for getting this leverage position, just small transaction fees when you open your position and when you close it. And if you want to get some yield, well, Angle is a stablecoin protocol, but it is also a yield farming platform that has built-in strategies to, to, to get yield. And Angle can offer a higher yield than what you could get using other protocols. Amazing. And, and so what are some of the collateral options that you guys currently support and, and, and might be looking at in the future? Um, for the moment, we're only using USDC and DAI, playing it super, super safe for our euro stablecoin. We plan, there are some ongoing uh, governance votes to uh, unborn new collateral types, uh, FEI and FRAX. We are playing it rather, rather uh, super, super safe for the euro stablecoin. Anyone is welcome to make a proposal to launch a new collateral for the euro stablecoin. We'd rather play it safe, integrate the euro stablecoin before accepting volatile collateral types, even though as I'm saying, as I said before, it could perfectly work in a setting where Ether is a collateral, where Bitcoin is a collateral. Uh, we could, we are going to accept at some point, I think, Ether, Bitcoin, but we will do it super slowly by capping the amount of ETH we have in reserves, not to be too dependent on it. So growing the protocol, it implies also growing the collateral types, but also growing the amount of stable coins we can do. We are just focusing on the euro at the moment. We could launch another stable coin like tomorrow. Uh, and one interesting feature with Angle is that Stable coins of the protocol are completely independent of one another. The collateral pools for the euro stable coin are different from the collateral pools of the, let's say, the CHF stable coin. And we are exploring in two directions. So still Forex, like CHF, GBP, GPY, stable coins. And we are also interested in making a stable coin pegged to an asset that does not have any inflation. Uh, we have some ways we could do this using like carefully built oracles. We, 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 knew, we knew how to build the oracle for that. It takes some time. It's going to take some energy. So an, an inflation resistant stable coin. Yeah. So let's say, let's say at the beginning of the year, you give one USDC, mm-hmm. you get one of these stable coin. And then there is a 2% inflation on the dollar during the year. And at the end of the year, 
with your one stable coin, you can get 1.02 USDC. Uh, and like giving giving uh, one uh, USDC in uh, like in the stable coin at any moment, you, know, you should always have the same purchasing power uh, as you had when you had one USDC when you gave uh, when you got the stable coin. Like uh, you, you should not lose any purchasing power from owning the stable coin, which is the case when you own a USDC or a euro because these are currencies that inflate. And if sure. you're not making any yield, you're just losing money. I mean, what index does the coin use to to achieve that? It's a um, complex problem uh, mm-hmm. because you need so you need a chaining feed. You need a chaining feed that's updated super super regularly on a day to day basis, uh, almost every hours. Because otherwise, there would be huge front running issues regarding the the protocol. Like people could anticipate uh, the oracle changes, take uh, actions before and after uh, the oracle change, and make a profit of, out of it, emptying the protocol's reserves. That's uh, that's a technical uh, a technical thing, but you need to find a way to 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 counter that. The, the obvious way would be to use a CPI uh, consumer price index mm-hmm. published by central banks, but these are published once a month. These are manipulable data based on methodologies that change, and it reflects inflation. But sometimes countries, you know, they remove like transport, energy from the computation of these indexes. N- not not the best way to to track inflation, even though that's what most people use. What we could do, what we plan on doing, if if we if we go on that way, uh, would be to uh, track the market price of government bonds. There are different types of government bonds. There are inflation-linked uh, government bonds and normal government uh, government bonds, like uh, German bonds, for instance. And so, if you compare the price, the market price at any instant um, of the inflation-linked and the non-inflation-linked government bond, you can anticipate, you can compute the market uh, anticipation of inflation, like how the market believes that the inflation is going to be uh, for a year. And if you do a time-weighted average price of market anticipation every day, you you can uh, have a sense of how inflation evolved on a real-time basis. But okay, it's hard to build. Right, because right, absolutely. You couldn't, you couldn't back it by USDC because necessarily this currency would be more powerful than USDC because there is no inflation in it. You need to back it with um, Ether or, or Bitcoin, but you would need Ether to be more powerful than, than inflation to, 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 to always remain over collateralized. Right. So it's hard to make. One one thing you could, uh, you could assume uh, when making a stable coin is just make a stable coin like that backed by USDC uh, and DAI, and I uh, hope that you'll be able to get a higher yield, a yield superior to inflation by making strategies uh, using using this stablecoin. This is feasible. It implies a lot of work. We don't have the time for this at the moment. We're mm-hmm. still a small team, but it's definitely something we want to explore. It could be the, the reserve currency of crypto. Incredible. And so, so for the end user, just so I understand this correctly, they can use Angle to get a decentralized euro stablecoin currently. Um, yes. Open perps, they can trade perps basically, yes. and they can also yield farm. Exactly. Yeah, they can, they can get yield, and you, you can technically you can yield farm using your euro stable coins because we're for uh, we we have a liquidity mining program where we incentivize uh, owners of uh, euro stable coins uh, to to get yield. Incredible. And and where does Angle the the token come into it? Yes, Angel Angel is the governance token. It's what allows you to participate on governance votes to onboard new collateral types to uh, launch new stable coins, to change the parameters, uh, and mostly to decide what we do with the protocol surplus. In a week, the protocol has accumulated like $1 million revenue. And the role of governance token holders is to decide what to do with the surplus. It's still the early days of the Angle token. We think, uh, and our community thinks too, that there are ways we can improve uh, the tokenomics. And I think that at some point we'll be shifting to a model where parts of the revenues made by the protocol are put in a surplus as a buffer and parts are distributed under the form of buybacks through Angle token owners. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll try to put some locking system to incentivize people like Curve, really uh, like Curve to incentivize people who are here for the long term. This has not been uh, implemented for the moment because we felt that we're better off uh, having a protocol that accumulates surplus in case of a Black Swan event. And it would ruin all our efforts uh, to just distribute the surplus and then have a protocol that collapses. And we are stronger with, 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 a, with a huge surplus uh, on the protocol. Incredible. And so, okay, for, for users, how do they gain access to the state, to your Euro stable coin right now? Yeah, we have an app, uh, app.angle.money. Uh, you just supply, uh, bring USDC like a swap uh, and you get, uh, you get Euro stable coins. Super straightforward. We have Uniswap pools, sushi swap pools too. You can arb both and, and choose the one that's, uh, that's, uh, that's best for you. But, uh, yeah, the, the using directly the protocol is, is the way for the moment. 
Amazing. And so where, where are you hoping to see this Euro stablecoin? What are some of the usage cases across DeFi you might be hoping to see yes. in the future? So when you're making a decentralized stablecoin protocol, if you want your protocol to grow, you need to find some usage in DeFi. I, I believe, I may be wrong on that. I've seen, I've seen other protocols launch uh, stablecoins for use cases that are not here yet in DeFi, uh, focusing on communities in Africa. That, that's great uh, for remittances and everything. I don't think that's the best strategy to, to implement. Uh, let's first make something big in DeFi with juicy yields, and then you'll be able to, to kill the remittances market to have implications in traditional finance. So the first use cases we want to build are really the DeFi ones, uh, be able to propose yield to stablecoin owners, that's the first thing using uh, Aave by being integrated in Rari and, and many DeFi protocols. That's the first thing we want to make uh, really mm-hmm. yield on Euro. That's what we. That's why we started this program, and that's what. Mm-hmm. That's why we're uh, fighting for uh, every day. Uh, first thing, many D- DAOs today are paying people that are in Europe in USDC. We would like to become the DeFi means of payment in Euro. Instead of having people getting paid in USDC for those who want to be exposed to the euro, yeah, we want the euro to, to occupy uh, to occupy this position. And that's another use case we want to have to be integrated across all the Gnosis safes of people to, to stream their payments to, to people who work for them. Another use case. But we can also be the currency of exchange um, for DeFi protocols. Uh, like, let's say on OpenSea, you're, you're mostly buying on uh, your NFT using ETH, but people selling the NFTs as well as people buying the NFTs, like... Is, is super volatile. And in the end, you don't know how much the NFT would have costed you. And we hope that more and more stable coins and including our Euro stable coin would be used by other applications in blockchains. Another use case we want to get. And a use case that's important for us is the use case of centralized exchanges. Uh, nowadays, USDT makes up most of the trading pairs on centralized exchanges. Many people using these centralized exchanges are based in Europe. They don't really understand what USDT is. And uh, we feel that having a euro stable coin to, to make up these trading pairs could help a lot. Incredible. Well, you know, I think you're addressing some really uh, interesting kind of issues within DeFi. And yeah, I, I hope that, you know, StakeDAO also gets a, a chance to work with you guys yes. on this. On this. Normally, they should be building a strategy on top of the protocol. I hope it's going to be live in the coming weeks. Let's see. Let's see what it gives. David, uh, David is working hard for that. Amazing. Well, it's going to happen if, if David's working on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank, thanks so much for coming on today, Pablo. Really, really interesting. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was really nice meeting you and like for people in your community or even for yourself. If you have any question about the, the protocol, we have a super active Discord, uh, 30,000 users. Happy to welcome anyone there. We, we have uh, some super engaged community members. And, and the goal is first to build a reliable euro stable coin. But I, I think what's most important is to have fun along the way, uh, learn new things and try to experiment with DeFi. This is still a new market. Lots of things need to be done. And I hope that we'll all learn together or find good idea, better ideas along the way. I think our stable coin protocol is a good idea but maybe there are better models to be found and we really want our community to be the place where everything uh, happens. That's what it's about, right? Yeah. Staying sure. open. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been, it's been great. Take Bye-bye. Care, Bye-bye. See you, mate.